Hello and welcome back to my let's play of uh, XCOM 2, War of the Chosen, uh, Iron Man, Commander. I got it all, yay! I don't really remember where we were because I recorded the last episode I think three Commander, days ago. Forces waiting to make contact, but we'll have to make the first move. Uh, so I think I have to research resistance comms, which I haven't even started yet. Nothing on the local comms. Advent's been quiet lately. I'm guessing we have you to thank for that. Our pleasure, dead mother. Enjoy it while it lasts. We plan to. Our water purification... Massive signal good. coming from the Advent Network Tower. It's... low, Sir, I think you want to see this. Fellow citizens. For 20 years, the Advent Coalition has worked tirelessly to repair the ravages and injustices of the old world. Under our stewardship, our cities prosper, our people flourish, and our world deals. And yet, among us, there are still those who would refuse to acknowledge the truth, who are determined to see all that we have achieved. Multiple radar contacts on approach to Haven Alpha 7. That must end. Even as I speak to you today, you've got incoming on approach. The signal's breaking up. Territory to end the scourge once and for all. They're right on top of you. Losing you, Avenger. Raise them again. We will ensure your continued safety. We will overcome these radical elements and usher in another 20 years of peace and prosperity. They don't stand a chance. Commander, we should get a squad ready to deploy. Haven currently under siege by the aliens. Give the word and we'll move out. So Our next operation will put us right in the middle of chosen territory, Commander. And there's a good chance they'll show up to interfere, so we should plan accordingly. I really like this kind of mission. Here we have to um, protect the people of the outpost and try to save as many as we can. Do I... Oh, apparently all of my veterans are injured. I kind of want to take him, but taking tired people is a fool's gambit. They, they acquire negative traits and they do crazy shit and it's a bad time. And it's a really bad idea. So... And I currently don't have any way to deal with negative traits so I will not take them and I'll just have to play a little slower. This means that if we do lose a couple more people because we have two rookies then that's just the way it is. So there's two ways these missions can be. Uh, in one way you have to first um, free an outpost with a lot of fighters and they'll go to the second part of the mission where there's a lot of um, people, civilians that can't fight back and you need to save as many as you can. And the other way is And the other way this goes is that we just spawn on a map that is littered with NPCs and we have to either kill all the aliens or move to at least six. I usually just kill all the al aliens because um, the other way is kind of tiresome and doesn't usually get you better results than just going for the aliens and ignoring the civilians. One five, 
hostile forces are attacking the outpost. Eliminate all enemy units and protect those civilians. Advent came in hot, and so did we. You won't have a concealed position for deployment on this one. Okay, so I think we're on the second type, which is weird because I can't see any civilians in my range right now. So I'm basically just gonna wander into the map and try to find some enemies. And on this, since we're so light on people or qualified people here, the positioning of my sniper is the most. Okay, so I didn't expect to see a priest this early. So I'm not. I'm gonna try it. Wait, maybe. I don't know if I should aggro them. A priest can mind control your people. I, I think I need to get my sniper into a good position first and then on this round and then attack them on the next round and pretty much um, except that I'm gonna lose some extra civilians I really hope they don't get seen here because I can't see the second uh, the, the stun lancer I think is in the fog of war so I don't know if I can see his field of vision. So what I'm doing here is basically looking at the target preview. And okay, so I can see him. If you're looking at the target preview and you can see some people, if you position your soldier there, um, the pod will aggro you. And I want to avoid that so I can take the first shot using my sniper, who is probably the only reliable damage dealer we have at this point but I'm probably gonna have to use my Reaper more aggressively because I don't really have a choice. I don't think the rookies... Oh shit. Okay, yeah, but we hit them on their uh, turn, which is important because they can't do much. And we actually hit them, which is also very nice. One problem we have currently is that we don't have a ranger with us. This means I think I'm gonna have, we'll see how it goes, but I'm very likely gonna have to use my stun lancer aggressively, uh, my, my reaper aggressively, which is not such a good thing. Because then I can't really use her to spot any pots. Yeah, I thought so. So basically, yeah, so I'm gonna have, I'll see how you don't have a grenade, so you're useless. Okay, so I can actually flank the priest, which is important. We have a pretty good shot on the stun lancer, so in the worst case, should at least be able to kill him and you can see here we have a 70 percent chance i don't think it'll Im well it won't improve because uh, even if we destroy his cover because we um because we're flanking him so he's not gonna be able to f so i'm just gonna assume that we will kill the stun lancer it doesn't even Oh, okay, so the you can see here that the cover bonus um, is still extremely high because he's standing next to these crates, so I should destroy it to be able to more surely be able to land a shot with my second one because we are gonna have to kill this entire pot. Hopefully, okay, so he still has five life left. 
So I don't think there's a way around us taking this shot, which I really hope hits. It did. So we didn't get revealed, but we are gonna get revealed on the next chance, and you are gonna have to hit that shot. He did, and he killed the priest. He didn't kill it. Oh, they, they already have sustain? Okay, what this means is that they basically can't be killed, uh, but they just... Um, they go into stasis after, after they've been killed. And they can just act on the next turn, which is quite annoying. Okay, so we don't have to deal with the priest at all because he's dead. Uh, he's burning, so he's guaranteed to take damage, so I'll just completely ignore him. I will trigger this pot, but there's a lot of high cover here. So I should trigger the pot by shooting them with my sniper. Even though 65% is horrible. I will take out the sec go for the sectoid first because the sectoid can mind control and mind control is a giant pain in the ass it's early on and also the sectoid is more likely to go into full cover I think that's how the AI works okay so we are the stun lancer can mess us up pretty badly as well as the sectoid so we should deal with both I don't think I don't even think I can this well I I am gonna destroy well you can I don't know if this is the kind of tree that you can destroy I think it might be so when you're placing your claymores you always have to make sure you still have a line of sight of the reaper to the claymore because if you don't then it's pretty much useless Um, and then I'm gonna shoot that and hope. Okay, so he still has low cover from that, which is bad. So again, we don't really have to deal with the sectoid or with being flanked here. Um, I don't think we have. Okay, so I'm gonna go into full cover here. Even though there's pretty much no chance I'll be able to hit the sectoid at all. So I... Okay, so she can't see anybody, which is... Again, the priest is completely... We really don't have to worry about the priest because he's gonna die first thing on the next turn. So I can get my people flanked without much of a problem. I'm gonna move him here. Um... I don't care about you. I'm gonna go for the stun lancer and hope this hits because this is just a bad chance, a bad possibility. Because the stun lancer can do quite a bit of damage. I think at this point he can even one shot my people. And she, I think it's very unlikely that the sectoid moves out of cover at all, but it doesn't really matter if he does. I think he's guaranteed to do a psychic attack so I'll just move her here in order to be able to flank him next turn maybe he'll move maybe he'll attack the civilians I don't know we'll see okay so he's retreating this means he's gonna run towards the next pod which is good for us because they triggered the next part on our uh, on their turn which is always good and they are all in low cover all the the noobs lose a lot of um, stamina really quickly okay so I always like to start off with my sniper to be able to see how what shots he can take because he's pretty much if it's this bad, I would consider just moving him, but um, I think we might need him, so I'm just gonna flank here with my reaper, 
so this improves our chances I, I think I am gonna shoot with my sniper and not move him at the best target which is the sectoid well I don't know we'll see if we can deal with the stun lancer because the stun lancer is quite a big problem if he I'm pretty I'm very sure that he can one shot both of he can one shot the rookies and and he has an insane amount of movement possibilities so okay so I'm going to move the one rookie over here there's also one reason why I really don't want to reveal my reaper it's because she can probably also get you do three damage what the fuck there's nothing uh, okay so I can pretty reliably kill the stun lancer but we still have two sectoids remaining after that which is not good at all okay so I'm basically gonna take your best shot which of course you missed I really hate snipers when they're low level they're so bad so we don't really benefit from killing uh, from shooting the sectoid very much I think we're better off uh, going for a stun lancer and hoping not to be put in a position to reveal our reaper which is exactly what happened and that's very good so our reaper is gonna do nothing this turn but reload her gun because like I said you really don't want to lose your reaper they are very very expensive or or you can't get another one okay so he created a zombie and so did he I think Which means we basically just have to kill the two sectoids in order to clear the squad Okay, so he's out of ammo. I th also think the sniper's out of ammo, which is really bad because if you reload his gun, he can't shoot anymore. Oh, your cover got destroyed. That's unfortunate. Um, the sniper can't do anything. I'm pretty li uh, sure. Yeah, so he's. So I'm gonna move him up. I hope to full cover. I think he's so far back he's probably not gonna get aggroed at all. So one of the important upgrades you need to get for your snipers is an auto loader which allows you to reload your gun without taking a turn. Okay so our main objective on this turn will be to kill both of the sectoids if we can but I think it's gonna be very unlikely. Yeah, okay so he can't even see the second sectoid and we don't have vision of the okay so I'm basically just gonna go all out for the first sectoid because I'm it's also quite possible that the zombie that the second sectoid created can't even reach my squad so if you kill him you're probably not gonna take damage next turn and I won't have to reveal my uh, reaper which is very important so we killed the sectoid, which is very good. I can also get that loot and see the second sectoid. If I don't, if I see, no, I don't see the second sectoid. I was gonna say if I see the second sectoid and nothing else, I could actually just attack him with my reaper if there's a high chance of killing him because then I can put her into shadow next round again yeah but that didn't turn out so I 
With reapers, it is often better to put them into low cover if it's next to high cover to avoid them getting... So basically, you have to think where is my enemy going to take cover because if they take cover directly next to the reaper, the reaper is going to get flanked and uh, revealed. And you don't want that to happen, of course, especially not on um, the enemy's turn. Which is the only way it will happen. So this is a faceless, and I, it has this glitch. Um, it has this graphical glitch on the PS4. I don't know why. So. What this tells me is that I think this means that we're on our last pop. So if we can kill the faceless as well as the wow the face. Uh, if we can kill both of them on our turn, really you can't see anything. God damn it! Then the mission might be over, but. I'm not sure, it seems like very few, doesn't seem like very many pods to me. We killed, I think, three pods. Can you see the faceless? Yes, you can. So I think the faceless can also one-shot my noobs. I might have to take out the sectoid using my reaper. We're not even gonna. Three damage that is so incredibly bad. So you can't shoot at. The, oh. This might even be one of the. This might even be a case where we have to shoot at the actual zombie instead of the sectoid. Can you move to flank? Okay. I think I'm gonna move here to flank the sectoid in order to kill him, but this puts him in a bad position. So I probably shouldn't do it, but I really... Because he can't, he can't kill the faceless anyways, and the sectoid could cause us some trouble. I guess I'll just move him back in order to... I don't think the faceless can reach him here, I hope. So... I'll try to avoid getting him killed. So why does he... Well, I, th I guess they do 3 to 5 damage. Can you... Okay, so you... I'm gonna let him shoot at the zombie to avoid getting additional uh, civilians killed, maybe. But he's he can't hit shit anyway, so it's... Mute. I really... I don't think it's necessary to reveal our Reaper at this point. I'll just position. No, I'll just keep her here basically. This just for backup. Wait, did he just take two moves? What the hell? What for? So, I've never really seen these zombies survive more than one turn, so I don't know how much they can move, but it seems... So that was two movement turns, so I shouldn't be able to attack. Faceless also shouldn't be able to reach anybody, which is important. I definitely want to get some kills with my Reaper in order to level her up as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna take out the sectoid because we're not gonna run into a, a new pod this turn, I don't think. Can you flank the sectoid? Why is this? Oh, I think the tree's in the way. Okay, yeah, so this should be a flanked sectoid because the other two can't get flanked because they can't use cover anyways. Okay, so she has an 87% chance of killing it. She did. 
Yeah, she's very like she she didn't get revealed. That is amazing. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So. I maybe should have moved him, but I think we'll get to 70% chances with that thing. Hey, my sniper hit something. It's almost like he's a marksman. Yeah, so this mission was really easy. As it turns out, because on the first mission, they apparently the first uh, retaliation mission, they don't really give you very many enemies, which makes sense. hoping to get uh, I don't even know if they leveled up if they killed anybody because I think only leveling uh, killing uh, enemies gives them XP I don't know maybe it's also going on missions but anyways I really hope we get a new Ranger and the Reaper leveled up which is very very good target definition is also extremely good it means that once she sees an enemy the enemy is marked and even if the enemy moves into the fog of war then you know where it is this this works on the assassin as well which is very important but sometimes she also has a move that can shake this off shrapnel is also very nice so i can actually take no i can only take one Hollow targeting on a Reaper, I don't know if it's very useful. Because the Reaper usually doesn't shoot unless it's for a kill shot. In, in Lieutenant, we're gonna get one of the best abilities um, in that the Reaper, as long as it kills someone with their shot, it doesn't increase the chance of getting revealed, which at the beginning of the mission is zero. So you can just endlessly give uh, give kill shots, and then the reapers be really useful. So I'm gonna go for shrapnel because it's good, and I think it's more useful at this point. Remote start could also I I usually don't use it, but it could be very useful at the beginning of the game. So I'll take remote start. I hope it doesn't reveal. Yeah, it doesn't reveal the Reaper, so it makes the Reaper just a little bit more useful. Um, he's gonna get that eye, even though at the current moment he sucks so much and can't hit shit. Anyways, you are a specialist, which is good. And you are a sharpshooter. Well, okay. I think our reapers tired too and I also really I'm really scared of taking out the reapers very much until we get better armor I guess if we use them carefully it's okay but sometimes you need the damage which is so the more people you save the less uh, the more you get an increase of uh, increase of your monthly supply which is good so we did pretty well okay so I'm going to look what we can do now first I'm gonna look how long our people are out for uh, so the scanning 
is kind of bad, I think. If you can avoid doing it, like just scanning at... Oh, look, she's out nine days. It would have been better if she got injured at this point. But with 5 HP, it's probably better if she doesn't get injured. Because injured and dead are very close together. Okay. So I'm gonna go for these. Like, these kind of things are really bad, actually. Well, I'm gonna take the soldier. There. Okay, so we got the resistance ring, which is good. Because if we don't, then they'll fucking annoy us all the time. And it also gives us the possibility of doing covert off. How long this is. Okay, so in three days we'll get... It's bad, because in three days we won't have our Reaper available and this kind of... I'm gonna have to take the Reaper out even if she's tired, which is really bad. Because this type of mission works much more easily with a Reaper. And I think that mission expires if you don't use it. So we got a Grenadier, which is good because Grenadiers are damaged. And we need all the damage we can get. We still don't have any alien alloys. Wait, can we... Wait, no, shit. Yeah, I was gonna look at the other scan sites if there were was a possibility of getting alien alloys but there isn't so we now can attach an additional um attachment to our assault rifles which is nice i guess we're going to go for gauss rifles because six days is really good for that type of uh, research even though we really need resistance communications I'm glad to see our joint effort paid off like we hoped the resistance factions have helped to locate our captive soldier so if I ignore this okay so they got promoted we can the we gain from working with the resistance factions on their covert operations are a major boon to our efforts but there are also risks involved. Our soldiers could potentially be attacked or taken captive while in the field. So it's not as easy a decision as it may seem. Word is we've got a new trick or two available, Commander. Maybe we should give them a try. Commander, Moss has been captured. We should do everything we can to get him back before the Chosen group God knows what to him. This operation is going to require some field experience, Commander. We'll need to send one of our vets to lead the effort. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that because we need all we don't have very many soldiers available at all. So basically we're gonna take one where we can use the shittiest soldiers. I don't want that. Belly points are good. Um and we can use our rookies which is also good. So you two, uh, I don't know. I don't care if they get injured. It's fine. Is our Let's just hope your people can keep up. I don't care. Okay, whatever. Then fine. Okay, so we're gonna see how what our new rookies turned into. Okay, so he's a uh, ranger, which is good. We needed those. And he is, yeah, so I think this went the best way it could. Okay, so um, in the next episode, I'll be rescuing Mox. And I'll see you then. Bye.